Hi, and welcome to Hobel Home Safari. My name is Angelina, and I work at the Education Department here at Utah's Hobel Zoo. Today, we're going to be doing an activity together and learning about orangutans. To do this activity, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a pencil, some paper, and different arts and craft supplies. I have things like pipe cleaners, string, an egg carton, and a paper towel tube. Now, it's okay if you have things that are different than this. Today we're working on our engineering skills and our imagination, so whatever you have is gonna work just fine. Now, you're also going to need a cutout or a picture of an orangutan, and a picture of an oil palm. Now, we have provided some uh, copies that you can make at home and you can color them and make them look really neat or if you want to draw or find your own you are welcome to do so. Now if you need to stop this video at any time you are welcome to pause it and join us again when you are ready. Now in order to do this activity we're going to need to know a little bit more about orangutans. Orangutans are great apes. They are apes that are different than the other species of apes which makes them pretty cool. So they live in the islands of Borneo and Sumatra, which are in Asia. They are this really cool red-brown color that makes them pretty distinct and easily to identify when looking at your different ape species. They don't live in large groups the way that a gorilla or a chimpanzee or a bonobo would, and they spend most of their time up in the treetops. Your other species of apes all live in Africa. They are able to climb trees, but they do spend most of their time on the ground, especially when they're traveling and they are usually kind of a dark brown or a black color. Now, orangutans, there's three different species of them. Here at the Utah's Hogel Zoo, we have Bornean orangutans. Now, orangutans, they all have these amazing adaptations to help them live in their rainforest home. Now, one of the ones that are most noticeable with orangutans are their arms. So if we hold our arms out, fingertip to fingertip, it's roughly as long as we are tall. If you're an orangutan, that'd be a lot closer to twice as long as you are tall. So they're able to reach branches that are pretty far away. On the end of those arms, they have hands that are really big. They have really long fingers and long palms, and so they are able to grab onto branches to help them climb and swing. Now orangutan legs are nowhere near as long as their arms are, but their feet look pretty similar to their hands. They even have toes that work quite a bit like thumbs do, so they're able to use both their hands and feet to hold on to things as they climb. Now, their arms and their hands are not the only things that orangutans have that help them survive in the rainforest. If we look at orangutan skulls, we can look at their teeth. They might look really big, but hopefully they look similar. So if we look at human teeth as well, you'll notice that the teeth are the same number and the same shapes. Theirs are just a lot bigger than ours. And that's because we are both omnivores. Now, orangutans don't eat pizza, and they don't eat ice cream or our favorite salads, but they do eat plants and meat. They like things like fruit and tree bark, but they'll also eat small animals. Orangutans also are very intelligent. They have a big brain inside their skull, and they use that big brain to help them problem solve and use tools. Scientists have even seen orangutans use large leaves the way we might use an umbrella or a rain jacket. Now, all of these things make orangutans so they are very well adapted for living in their rainforest home. But all three species of orangutan are considered to be critically endangered. One of the reasons for this is palm oil. We use palm oil in everything. It is in our makeup, in our lotion, in our soaps, and also in some of our favorite treats like candy bars, cookies, and crackers. We use a lot of palm oil and because of that, we've had to cut down a lot of the rainforests that orangutans call home. It'd be really hard for us to stop using palm oil because it's in so much of our stuff. And a lot of people who live in the areas where orangutans live work on palm oil plantations as their job. Now, something else that happens when orangutans and other animals lose their habitat is called habitat fragmentation, or it means that their habitat is in pieces. You might have part of a rainforest over here. Part of a rainforest over here but they're not connected anymore. It's a big palm oil plantation or some other divide. So animals on this side can't get to the animals on this side or find the food or other things that they need. 
and this can be a really big problem for a lot of different animals. So our activity today is we're going to figure out how to solve that problem of habitat fragmentation for orangutans. So to do that, we are going to be taking our picture of our oil palm and our cutout of the orangutan. Our job today is going to be getting this orangutan from one side of the paper, or part of our rainforest, over our palm oil plantation and to the other side without touching this paper. We're going to be using all of our craft supplies in order to do that. Now, there's a few steps we're going to take. One, you need to think about your solution first. Think about how you want to solve this problem before we start making it. Two, write down or draw a picture of your ideas. It'll help you solve problems and figure out how you're going to create it before you start. Three is when you actually make your model of your solution. Four, please tell somebody about your solution and the things you're learning today. If you would like to, you are welcome to send us a picture and write us a letter about the solution you made. I love to see how different uh, solutions are and how creative people can be. Now, as you make your things, you are welcome to pause this video and when you're done, start again. All right, now there's so many different ways you could have made a solution to this. One solution would be this. So this is something that some teachers made while doing the same activity. And it actually is a pretty good model of what people are doing in real life in Borneo and Sumatra to help with habitat fragmentation for orangutans. So they make large bridges that span from one side of the rainforest across palm oil plantations and to the other parts of rainforest. And the orangutans are able to climb along them and travel through safely. Now, of course, this is not the only solution you could have come up with, and it's not the only solution that people are working on in real life. While those orangutan bridges are being used, people also teach other people about orangutans and their habitats. Here at Hobo Zoo, we do that a lot, just like we're doing now. But we also have partners like the Kingdom of Tongan Orangutan Conservation Program in Borneo, which teaches people about orangutans and how important they are as well. We also have a really cool uh, program called the Roundtable for Sustainable Palm Oil. And this is where our companies can say that they promise to use palm oil that is sustainably sourced, which means that their palm oil don't have to cut down more rainforests in order to get that. Cheyenne Mountain Zoo made a really cool app that you can use to scan a barcode and it will tell you whether or not that your favorite pro uh, product is using sustainable palm oil or not and it can help us make better decisions when we're buying things. Now, I hope you learned a lot today and I hope you tell other people about the things that you learned about orangutans and their habitats. Thanks for joining us and I hope you have a good rest of your day.